Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Science Faction. The only show where a scientist, a comedian, and a comedian scientist come together to discuss science. Comedically. Hello and welcome to Science Faction, episode 32, the 32nd episode. <laughs> that sounds I good. am your host, Robert Timothy, full-time archaeologist, part-time comedian, and with us is our full-time research scientist, the sexiest scientist in San Diego, if you can say that three <laughs> times fast. Jackie, how are you doing today? I would like everyone to say it more than three times. Damien, go ahead. Go ahead. She said everyone. Not <laughs> no, just you. <laughs> all the listeners. I, yeah. I know you're all saying it right now. I just can't wait for my intro. It's going to be good. I know it. <laughs> and joining us, too, is Damien. He's here. <laughs> well, <laughs> at least mine here. was factually accurate. Yeah. So. Hey. How you doing, Damien? <laughs> doing great. You know, I like how you didn't need to lie to me to make me feel good. No. And I need, you're right. My gender is... Nor would that be my goal. We are broadcasting live from the Madhouse Comedy Club atop the skyline in downtown San Diego. Again, we have moved on up. Eat it's that, George nice. Jefferson. We have nice. gone from, from trailer trash all the way up to trailer trash in a nice studio. I was really excited to tell my significant other that I no longer need one of these boys to walk me to my car. You, we, you know, it's funny. is That's not actually a joke. We had to literally yeah, walk you to your car. <laughs> because well, of the riffraff yeah. that was around the old place. We still have to walk her to her car because this place is in a mall and if we don't she'll just she'll spend the fortune her her fiance has said listen you guys watch after her you don't send a heroin addict to to, you know the (laughs) shitty parts of downtown you don't send jackie through nordstrom's without a guard uh, it's okay. on you guys because I walked through before I got here. So there. <laughs> I will be your sponsor. <laughs> All right. Let's move right on to science articles. From molecules to particles, this is science articles. All right. Science articles. Some very interesting ones today, guys. A lot of these have to do with health. I hope you're feeling healthy today because I'm about to fuck your world up. Fuck me up with health, Bobby. The very first article we have, the vegetarian virus. <gasps> I know. Something Damien better hope he does not get. It's not actually a virus, but this is very interesting. So basically, throughout the South, specifically in Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia, they had this weird rash of this disease start spreading, and they couldn't figure out what it was or how it <laughs> was working. Is that just what they call vegetarianism, a weird disease? They're like, <laughs> <laughs> they ain't eating beef? What? What is this? He caught a case the liberals, Doc says. Uh, Basically, this allergy has been spreading around to meat. And you're not talking about an allergy that little kids are being born with, like when we talk about peanut allergies. Mm -hmm. This is, you've lived your entire life eating meat. In in some cases, these guys are hunters. Mm -hmm. You've been killing deer and eating them your entire life. All of a sudden, you're allergic to red meat. And you're very allergic. Yeah. That'd be so awful. You start getting very sick. You, so your throat can swell up and go into anaphylactic shock. You start throwing up, having massive amounts of diarrhea. It's, it is a very, very serious allergy. If you imagine this, like think of your life as like a good old town southern boy. One day you're eating like hamburgers and steaks and Soylent Green. And then the <laughs> next <laughs> you have a bite of sausage and all of a sudden you are vomiting and have diarrhea and your throat starts closing up and stuff like it's, it is a crazy thing. And keep in mind, this have is a bite of sausage, then start. Is that a gay thing, sir? <laughs> are you calling me a homosexual, sir? It doesn't affect chicken or turkey because what they found is the reason this is happening is from a tick bite. These guys are actually getting this from a tick who's got a specific sugar in its stomach called alpha gal. And when the alpha gal gets into your body, when it bites you, your immune response starts attacking it and learns that that specific sugar is associated with that tick bite or an infection, and it goes crazy on it. Unfortunately, that sugar is also in red meat. You eat some red meat, your immune system starts attacking your own body, and this is what we call an allergic reaction. This is your immune system going out of control. You can die from this, and as of now, we have no cure for it. We can't tell these people, oh, just do this, this, and this, and we'll be fine. We have not been able to desensitize them. So as of now, you get bit by this tick, you get the disease. It's called the Lone Star Tick, by the way. (laughs) Fuck you, Texas. Uh, You get this disease, you've got it. They just tell you no more meat, no more red meat, and by the way, milk. Milk can also have even small amounts of milk. So no more red meat and milk. Your life is just different now. Congratulations. So the reason reason that you (laughs) don't get the allergic reaction when you eat red meat regularly is because you know it, the the sugar itself isn't necessarily what's bad but because it's associated with the ticks exactly. venom somehow 
that's what's generating the allergic reaction. Yep. Okay. So, uh, Frank, uh, how come you're not eating your steak? Doc says I was bitten by some alpha gal. <laughs> Damn leader lesbian around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Going along, forcing everybody to eat her veganism. <laughs> it was really hard to nail down, not only because these people had a lifetime of eating meat. Like, they couldn't even figure out what these people were reacting to at first. Yeah. Because not only would they not think it would be meat, because they've eaten meat their entire life, but it takes about six hours, in some cases, for the anaphylaxis to set in. And because of that, what happened to you in the last six hours? Would you remember if you had, like, a hot dog or something like that? So, Well, it could have been, okay, so we had to narrow it down. Was it chewing tobacco? Yeah, yeah was exactly. It, was it bud? Yeah. Was it, where, where is the allergy? Miller light. Well, it didn't meth because we've been doing way too much of that. We would have known earlier. <laughs> was it truck nuts on his car, perhaps? <laughs> so we don't know if this will fade over time. Right now, it's not showing a propensity to. It is showing that the more times you get bit, the more severe your reaction is. So once you already have alpha-gal issues, then you probably should be very careful about ticks because I, I feel like a, a few of them and then like you get a tiny bit of milk in your eye and you die immediately. Oh, God. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. That's, that's what it sounds like. That sounds accurate. Yeah. yeah. So I got a couple questions for my panel about this very interesting disease. Get her done. Number one, how ironic is it that this disease sprang up and propagated in the American South, a place where vegetarianism means getting the chicken plate? <laughs> what will good old red meat eating Southerners say when they find out they have this disease? Grab your pitchforks and white hoods. There's some alpha gal spreading this. We're going to find every lesbian in the town and burn them. So you think that all the, the white Southerners, when they get this disease, are just going to start attacking lesbians like crazy? Yeah. Listen, I don't care if some scientist with his book learning is saying that it's nothing to do with lgbt thing. this is two birds with one stone tonight we are intolerant we are going to meet right outside the subaru dealership with pitchforks <laughs> and a burning cross y'all heard about how the government made aids well now those liberals are making vegetarians and they're spreading it all around the heartland I like the fear mongering. I do like the idea that they're just going to get really pissed and attack one group that has nothing to do with it. Yes. Lesbians good group to go after food. too because as far as like large groups to go after, not so great upper body strength. Yeah. Plus oh, really? Good well, for them. A lot of them as Harleys, and those things have uh, pretty good. They, I'm you just can saying, get away. if you're going to go racist and you go against black people, 50 percent of the population are males who have strong upper body strength. If yeah, you go after true. Mexicans, same thing. You go after lesbians, 100 percent of them low upper body strength. Yeah, because as it turns out, a shitty attitude, gruff look, and man's haircut doesn't make you tough. Like, doesn't necessarily oh, mean. <laughs> that's where I. That's where I got my water. First of all, I would like to apologize to all the lesbians out there whom I love and respect. <laughs> I was just pointing out a fact, which is that all <laughs> lesbians are women and therefore mathematically have lower I upper body strength. I think Damien, Damien was also pointing out a fact, though. It yeah. doesn't mean you're tough, per se. Damien went really offensive, and I'd like to apologize to you guys for him by way of asking them another question. <laughs> question number two. If you could choose to give this disease to anyone, who would you pick? Mythically, I guess like a Ron Swanson would be really funny to do. Yeah, but see, as, as an avid meat eater... I really, I, I almost don't wish it upon my fellow meat eaters. Like, I want, I almost wish I could switch it so that... Is that the name you get for chicks who are blowing your boyfriend, too, or...? Yeah, yeah well, we're a commune. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't talk about Supreme Leader that way. All of us love Supreme Leader. <laughs> He's gonna love that. I just, I just wish I could flip it on the people that annoy me, which are the vegetarians. <laughs> yeah, you could give them something and they wouldn't be able to have vegetables. Like they would have to eat meat. Damien, this would ruin you. You would actually die because you, you yeah. very publicly do not eat vegetables. That's right. your thing. I think I'd be forced to. I mean, I, life will find a way. I will adapt. I know it's healthier to eat vegetables, but vegetables de-incentivize with their horrible taste yeah i kind of like to enjoy the things i eat and uh, so if, if i could were, no longer enjoy meat yeah you couldn't have meat you 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 would be screwed you would starve to death and slowly die in front of us well let's be honest you the world would be beer. let's there's some true. meat in there the world would be a slightly better place let's yeah that's right <laughs> i'm doing my part what are you doing oh. i'm asking question number three <laughs> We should start engineering food allergies. This happened on, by chance, but we should start doing it on purpose. What food allergies would you engineer and for whom? I would engineer tofu allergies for Ooh. all the obnoxious people who are telling me that tofu is just like meat. Like, no, it's not. No, it's fucking not. And guess what? You eat too much of it, you increase your chance of getting breast cancer. So. Uh, little known Who's fact, it is just like the meat of the whale shark. The whale shark. Damien, go ahead. <laughs> Could you please repeat the question? 
about whale sharks or <laughs> uh, the whale shark is the largest <laughs> whale shark is the largest, largest fish, fish in, in the sea, world yeah. yeah and it is known as the tofu fish in southeast asia because of the fact that its meat tastes like tofu but its skin is up to four inches thick so it makes it very hard for predators including human beings to catch it even though it has a very slow speed they pull in food and plankton in the same way that whales do as opposed to sharks who actually have teeth and eat things up what everybody can't see is that there's a huge whale shark just standing behind bobby whale sharks can reach lengths of up to four <laughs> Whale feet. sharks got into Bobby. <laughs> That's right. And that is a big it's, whale shark. I mean, even to whale shark it. standards, that is a <laughs> yeah. large whale shark. It's like, yeah. like fifty five foot whale shark. Whale shark. Ooh, so you say tofu? We should give tofu allergies. I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm just sick of like all of the like tofu. I'm worried all the replacement tofu stuff, just so you can not eat what is totally. I'm worried about those people who like tofu will then start hunting more whale sharks to get their tofu like fix. So what got I them- hear they're pretty big. It they could go a big. long way, I think. Yeah, but the Japanese love tofu, and being big Ooh, has never stopped them from yeah. killing something in the sea. That's right. <laughs> the Japanese do like to kill beautiful things in the sea. Damien, what type of food allergies should we engineer, and for whom? Well, I'd like to engineer to prevent cannibalism, a food allergy against human meat. And I think oh, if that's you, a good plan. Huh, if you okay. could make it such a strong allergy. Uh-huh. But only when you ate the meat, because otherwise you're also made of human meat. So that might, that might that counter. Yeah. Well, what I'm, all I'm saying is, first off, don't eat the human meat. I uh-huh. want to prevent that. But also I want to have an excuse to getting out of going down on the old lady. Babe, I want to go down on you, but I also don't want to die of anaphylaxis. Yeah. <sighs> This I didn't make nature. Is, yeah, I'm so sick of all the ways men try to get out of it, you know? Yeah, I know. I, I've got a bunch of them, too. Like, uh, sometimes I'll just just hit her. Oh, okay. <laughs> well. Yeah, ask again. Ask again. <laughs> <laughs> you would never do that to a lesbian. No. <laughs> <laughs> one slightly more upper body strength than a regular woman. I'll grant you that. All right. On to article number two. Run for your death. A very interesting article came out. We all know that exercise is good for us. We know that exercise can help cut down on heart disease-related deaths, that it helps keeps us in shape, lowers obesity rates. But did you know that it can actually also be bad for you? Then seemingly, this kind of seems like something that would make a little bit of sense, but we hadn't really studied this up until now. We know that you can push your body too far and the body itself can break down, but that's not what we're talking about. In this case, they're actually talking about just exercising too much can be unhealthy for you. Very interesting study. It looked at 2,400 physically active heart attack survivors. So keep in mind, this is a different population. This isn't healthy individuals to start out with. But they are healthy, active heart attack survivors. And they looked at how much they exercised after their heart attack. They're exercising afterwards. They're, They're rehabilitating. And they saw what you would expect. There was a huge decrease in the amount of cardiovascular-related deaths in those patients who walked up to 46 miles per week or ran up to 30 miles per week. Mm -hmm. So the the line, if you imagine a graph that was charting deaths, you just see a line going straight down Mm -hmm. as uh, the more you exercise, the less deaths you have. But then there's this magic number right around running 30 miles or walking 46, which, by the way, turns out are the same thing. Awesome. I know. Awesome. I know. So uh, cardiovascular-wise and everything else. I look ridiculous running. That's yeah, why I'm really excited. Just, just walk. It's just sort of a If you walk thing, like twice as much, it's the same thing. Well, to be fair, it's your large childbearing hips. You yeah. know, like you, you knock over, you, you take over a lane of yeah. cars if you're walking down. But the good thing about them is that they don't lie. <laughs> they do not. Black dudes love it. <laughs> we found a 65% decrease in those particular things in people up to that point, running 30 miles, walking 46. And then at that point, it kind of plateaus around there a little bit before there. At, if you get more than running 30 miles or more than walking 46 in a week, your cardiovascular risk for heart attack starts going up again. Oh, it's like a J nice. flipped around. The graph looks like yeah. a J if it was a mirror image. And so you have this thing where what's going on is people are working out too much. It turns out that too much working out is bad for your cardiovascular system. We're not necessarily talking about your muscles breaking down or Mm -hmm. your knees going bad. or That's the reason this exercise is bad for you. Literally, exercising too much can be as bad for you as not exercising at all. So there's there's a point where you cross the line and you become like no different than the survivor who has to burn every calorie yeah. to stay alive in a yeah. post-apocalyptic world. <laughs> I feel like it has to do with the the amount of inflammation in your body. Like you can handle a certain amount through exercise, but at some point it's too much and then it starts to shift. One of the things they were saying is, you know, just like any or- other organ in your body, think of your liver. There's only so much alcohol you can put through your liver before it's going to shut down and say too much. God. The same thing is <laughs> true. We know a couple your- people who need to learn that lesson. Yeah, that's right. The same thing is true of your Fuck cardiovascular all of you. system. <laughs> You drink too much. I if I wasn't too drunk right now, I'd smack both of you. 
So the same thing is true of your cardiovascular system. You can overuse it, and that overusing it causes damage. Mm -hmm. it causes damage to the entire system itself, to the cell walls, to everything. For the first time, we can say, hey, man, past a certain amount, you're not only undoing the good you're doing, you're doing damage. Stop running. Start drinking. Is this yeah. just restrictive? Get off that tofu. <laughs> is this just restrictive to runners or to people who play like real sports or do something, some form of entertaining exercise that might, you know, no, that's entertain right. somebody with an actual personality? <laughs> um, they believe that approximately one twentieth of people in the U.S. are over exercising to the point where they're causing negative harm. So we should watch out for those people, but they don't quite equal out to the ten out of twenty people who are not exercising enough. So yeah, but that one who is is so annoying at work. <laughs> so annoying. I don't care what triathlon you did last weekend. Don't you think I want to exercise? But I don't want to appear like this annoying asshole. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I have an addictive personality. How do I know that I won't be like this douche? Yeah. A year from now. I'm, you know what? I'm really glad that you are not. Previous <laughs> studies have shown that about five hours of intense exercise per week is probably the upper limit of what you should expect to do and get a benefit out of it before mm -hmm. you start losing those benefits. Now, because is, every is that... football player, professional otherwise, five hours, that's what they put in. And, and, it's, they... and one of the things that they talk about is professional athletes. You know, what does this mean for professional athletes, for their cardiovascular system? Now, one of the things about professional athletes is, in general, genetically, they tend to have better cardiovascular systems. Sure. That's how they became professional athletes. Sure. And studies show that they live longer. Also, they exercise a lot. So it might be that people with certain capabilities <laughs> – can handle this type of damage a little bit better than others. They live longer with the concussion, though. Yeah. yeah like, Ironically, <laughs> you know who doesn't live very long? Basketball players. Oh, because there's, 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 there's so a lot big. of gun carry yeah. in that culture. No, no. <laughs> you know what it is? There is a number, and I think it's six foot five. And every inch you are over six foot five is a certain amount of years less you should expect to live. It's like smoking. Like every, huh. every year you smoked or something, you should expect to live less. The body of an older person cannot handle pumping blood up to a brain of a large person that's six foot five or higher, and your little heart as you grow older just basically can't handle it. <laughs> so, w so Wilt Chamberlain was living like you know I'm only yeah. on this. I'm not living to eighty. I'm yeah. living this up every yeah. three women a night at least. <laughs> We've previously identified that upper limit around five hours of intense stuff, so that kind of makes sense that that's what we're seeing. It proposes that individuals from either end of the exercise spectrum, whether they're sedentary or over-exercisers, would reap long-term health benefits by changing their physical activity levels. All right. Maybe we just tie one of the lazy people onto the active dude's back. Maybe yeah. that'll work. Maybe eventually they'll just start going. <laughs> just three-legged race from now on, guys. <laughs> All right. Three questions for my panelists. Question number A, excessive running may be as bad for you as excessive smoking or drinking. Who is going to be most troubled by this news? I feel like Lance Armstrong somehow. Okay. Yeah. So he did do a lot of exercise. He did do a lot of exercise and a lot of steroids. Mm-hmm. Might it, you know, maybe Lance Armstrong because uh, so many people are going to get out of running because the study focused on running, correct? That's right. And they're going to get into cycling. And Lance Armstrong knows that if he ever was going to get back into the game, the public will forget. Yeah. If he's uh -huh. going to get back in the game, he can't compete against a bunch of young cyclists. If no. Cycling is now the, the big oh, yeah, exercising sport. If you had a 23-year-old dude with one ball, he'd be way faster than Lance. Yeah. Exactly. Take that, Lance. When's the last time you saw one of those yellow bracelets? It's already started. There's a 23-year-old with no balls. Oh, my God. Oh my, like, no, this guy is not being held down by anything. He hot-ironed his scrotum just to get all <laughs> – nothing catches air. Oh wow. <laughs> wow. Such a visual. Dude. Yeah. I, that's actually just painful to hear about. Hot-ironed his scrotum. Ugh. Do you want to win or not? Lance Armstrong had one testicle removed to give him an edge. Yeah. This guy just went further. Question number two, as we talked about, if walking gets the same benefits as running, who the fuck are these sadists who love running? I know. I, I, I don't understand. And I hate when you say that to them, too, because mm -hmm. I've, I've been like, isn't it true that running is actually sort of just as beneficial? And they just... Walking is just as beneficial. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, walking. I... I always get – not possible. Not possible. It's so much harder. There's so much more work involved, blah, 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 blah. It's like, well, that's true. You do – it's not like the it's same – Yeah, it's not the same like if you run for, for 20 minutes and walk for 20 minutes. It's the same. It's running for 20 minutes is the equivalent of walking for like 35 minutes. Right. And uh, sprinters that I've known who are training for very large collegiate sprinting events – they don't sprint because it's too easy to get hurt. Mm -hmm. They walk quickly uphill. That's how they train for sprinting events. They walk quickly uphill. And that is apparently the same level of cardio activity and the same muscles and the same calories as running. You got to do it a little bit longer, but it's much easier on your joints and stuff. Can you picture those fast walkers, though, and how funny oh, they look? Yeah. It's so funny. I'm not talking about speed walking. Just go walk your fucking dog. Like, it's I know. Fine. I'm talking about speed walking, though. It looks ridiculous. 
I mean, Damien walks like If it makes you feel any better, I am actually a fantastic speedwalker. I did it once as a joke, and I was hauling ass. <laughs> and I was like, man, I could, if I could have gone pro in the speedwalking thing. Damien, <laughs> are you like one of those that. sadists who love to run? No, I am not. You know goddamn well I'm not. And I think society would have handled this problem like it's handling the CrossFit problem. Because CrossFit was out of control. Yeah, and agreed. And basically now there's such a negative stigma about bringing CrossFit up that it's really on the down. We need to get on this with running. Running's been out of control for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah agreed. All right, let's just start blaming stuff on runners. Done. Boston Marathon bombing wouldn't have happened if people weren't there to run. Yeah. Whoa. Totally. Totally. Few people know that 9-11 was actually an inside job done by a couple of guys uh, from the shoe factory. Uh, They they were long-distance runners. (laughs) Black Hawk Down, the Mogadishu event where 119 Rangers lost their life, that was in Africa where they're known for their great running. All right? 119 Rangers were killed by runners and i'll have you all know the black plague those rats were running from person to person okay that's just them. stretching what are you doing here jackie you, we're on, trying to do a science podcast have you ever seen a rat walk they're running. this is it this Come is on. it okay Damien let's move on to about. let's move on to question number c this should be what you bring up to everyone who brings up a marathon that they ran please do so in the most insulting way in the following dramatic recreation <clears throat> <clears throat> Hey Jackie, did you see oh, this? Hey. See this square number thing I'm wearing on my shirt? Oh yeah, that's uh, it's from a marathon I ran this weekend. Pretty uh, pretty sweet, you're huh? You're kidding! You're kidding! Uh, how did that go? I fucking ran a marathon. That's how it went. Now, did you did you run it yourself, or did you just get on the really high horse that you're always on? No, I just I ran a I ran a marathon. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, you know, since we're scientists, uh-huh. you know, fellow scientists, I. I read this really interesting science article. Do you, do you want to hear about some Was it science? about marathons? It was about marathons. It was about marathons, yeah, go actually. For it. it was about how marathons are mm-hmm. bad, how they're bad for you. And, and You mean like bad for you because they make you so unbelievably healthy that then no. it's harder for other people to look at you and your shimmering muscles. Yeah. Well, shimmering is bold. You're you just, see the you're square just, number? It's a pretty big deal. You're just sort of sweaty and gross. And actually, you smell horrific. But anyway, um, the article is telling me that running the amount that you do is actually bad for your heart and that you're going to die soon, which I got to be honest, I'm psyched about because you drive me fucking crazy. Okay. Um, also, I, I want to to let you know today that the run was for cancer i was diagnosed with cancer recently uh, oh my god so it'll be sooner <laughs> awesome all right damien let's try you uh, uh hey hey fellow comedian damien my name's bill oh, how, how are you doing in bill. this green room <sighs> doing fine bill hey i noticed you're uh, wearing a running number uh did no. you do a marathon today no i'm not running wearing a a running number. I'm wearing a regular T-shirt. There's no number on it. I don't know what you're talking. Maybe you're talking about a different guy who was talking to that girl Jackie a while ago. That's not me. This is what we call improv chops. Yeah. Uh, instead, uh, is, but you yeah. know, but yes, you know what's funny? Yes, and me. It is funny that you brought that up because uh, I did run a marathon this weekend. Oddly enough. Oh, I can't wait to hear about it. Please go ahead because I'm not going through my set in my head right now. Please tell me about your marathon. So basically, what I did was like I went to a place and then they're like 26.2 miles. Can you do it? And everybody else, you know, was like no. No way, but I was like, fuck yes, and then I ran it. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Hey, you know what? We've been talking for what, a minute now, and you've already brought up this marathon? Yeah. That's you right. know what's really cool? Like, you know, you know how like everybody really hates the guy who wears the Bob Marley shirt and says four twenty and talks about pot all the time? Society is genuinely kind of on the same page that it's not cool to be that guy. Why haven't we come down on you, Marathon Man? Because you're exercising weight. It's not even healthy. Don't you even read science periodicals? Or at what least- do you mean it's not healthy? I'm running marathons. It's super healthy. Okay, first off, I'd like to recommend to check out the extremely popular Science Faction on their 30-second episode. They discuss just how unhealthy running is. You're actually running yourself to an early grave. You are just as unhealthy as the smoker out there. First of all, I will take that advice only because I hear that that particular program has the sexiest host in podcasting. Yeah, his name's Damien, and he's awesome. I agree. And I hope to one day be as funny as him. All right? But, I mean, part of that is grinding out and not talking about your stupid fucking marathon before a show and going through my set in my head. Well, that sounds fair enough. By the way, the host was Bobby. All right, on article number three. (laughs) You'll edit that out, right, Bobby? (laughs) Sneaky. Article number three. (laughs) Biolab on $10 a day. 
So, very interesting. I like this article. It's one of those feel-good ones that I always love to throw these in every once in a while. One of the hardest parts of promoting STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education, is the cost of it, especially in primary and secondary education. Labs are expensive, and lab equipment is even more expensive. Oh, well, yeah. Jackie, why is lab equipment so damn expensive? You get, like, a beaker, and it's 500 bucks. What the fuck? It is. You know, it, well, it has to be sort of industrial grade you know it has to withstand extreme temperatures extreme acids bases all that kind of stuff when you talk about glassware when you talk about microscopes you're getting into like all kinds of intricate little parts you know and, and you heard jackie blame the jews so <laughs> what one of the most fundamental elements of any lab is a microscope and it's probably the most expensive part of commercially available lab kits so that and it's, it's super useful it's what you station a lot of primary experiments around but some researchers from Missouri University of Science and Technology found a way to make things a bit easier on schools and students with a really brilliant creation. They built a lab-quality microscope using only a smartphone and $10 worth of parts off the Internet. Even better, they actually teach a class of university students in which this is an extra credit project that you can do. So they actually build it using nothing but carriage bolts, nuts, wing nuts, washers, plywood, and plexiglass from a hardware store. And a pre-existing microscope. Yeah, they just take a regular <laughs> microscope, whittle it down into this just one. just pile all this stuff next to a regular microscope. carved it from a bigger spoon. <laughs> Listen, you want to be able to check your social media while looking into a microscope. That's yeah. what the phone's for. <laughs> <laughs> they take all of that stuff, and then they use the lenses from laser pointers. So they unscrew the top off a laser pointer lens, use one or sometimes two of those. They use LED click lights from a flashlight keychain for a stand and a smartphone for viewing. And they can enlarge things. They can look at it. It's like a really high-quality digital microscope. In fact, they can magnify 175 times with one of these lenses, and when they put two of them together, 400 times, which is awesome. That's awesome. And that lab awesome. quality. All right, a couple of questions for my, my panelists. Number one, what is Big Microscope going to do about this revelation? <laughs> I'll tell you. Big Microscope has no problem making money. That's true. Listen. Who makes the microscope? I would say Olympus guys? makes okay. sort of most of the microscopes. Now, where technology is, it's not just having a microscope at your lab bench. It's having a microscope in a unit that can run high throughput screening on cells and go through plates. It's basically a robot now. Yeah. So it's like... I wouldn't say this microscope is going to put anyone out of business, but it is super cool and really useful for students in particular. Yeah, and I'll tell you something. We use them in archaeology a lot, especially mm -hmm. for microlithic analysis. So if you're looking at flake stone tools, you're going to look really closely at them in very small uh, mm -hmm. parts. And that is a prohibitive cost for young archaeologists yeah. is the cost of a three to $400 optical microscope to do that and the size. You can't bring it to the field. Yeah. This thing is small cheap you can take it in the field with you pop your phone in it and do it and that's very very and cool microscopes to me. aren't meant to be moved they're actually yeah. designed to stay in one place all the time so it's really cool that you can bring it around damien what do you think big microscope's going to do i think it's going to affect people like you and me people regular people who are smartphone users because f small little upstarts like apple and samsung they've woken up a sleeping giant in big microscope <laughs> that's right they're going to come after them with everything you're coming after a big microscope they do scorched earth there may not be smartphones by this time next year they're going to tear it up Bold claim. I don't know. Question number two. What other functions can smartphones with MacGyvered parts serve in the lab? I'm hoping for like an x-ray situation. Oh, maybe we could use the scotch tape. Remember yeah, we learned about the, yeah, scotch tape? the scotch tape? Scotch tape and a smartphone and we can make an x-ray yeah, machine. Yeah, because then you know that would cut down on having to get x-ray or infrared machines. You know what's ironic? Actually, with scotch tape and some x-ray plates and a vacuum and a cell phone, we could make an x-ray machine. Awesome. Hmm. All right. Uh, here's what we could do in a lab. I could, uh, with a smartphone, mm -hmm. a Bluetooth earpiece, and me, mm -hmm. I think we can get a scientist laid. In oh, lab. all right. Oh, you think so? I think you could let me be his Cyrano de Bergerac. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're going to whisper sweet science nothings in his ear for him to say uh -huh. to his uh, young to the unsuspecting female lab scientist. assistant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I got to say, they're not, they're not the most charming men. So what, what do you think, uh, what, what are I'll some you, tips you might... Uh... I'll tell you what, um, Bobby, you play the scientist, okay. I'll be whispering in your ear, and you're trying to pick up on Jackie. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Ooh, uh, right. Hey, Jackie, how you doing today? Hey, I'm, I'm pretty good. How are you? This is, I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic. You look, you look really nice. Oh, thank you. This is my old lab coat, you know? Just, tell her how great her cleavage something. is. Tell her how great her cleavage looks th through her jacket. Yeah, through that uh, jacket, you're, I like how your titties are coming apart there. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Um, Put your finger and just slide them in, just just really quick, once say, or twice, just in between say? the cleavage. I'm sorry. Well, here, let me. Yeah, look at that finger. Yeah, go disappear, yeah. Okay. reappear, disappear, okay. reappear. Security. Okay, now, now take it out. Now take it out and say, uh -huh. "Whoa, I'm just kidding. Don't be uptight." 
I've already walked away. <laughs> That's why I'm not answering. It's okay. Text her a dick pic. He's, he's already been fired. Listen, I'd like to apologize to the listeners. Jackie doesn't have the improv experience that Damien and I have. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and let me go get security. She was going to the next level. Uh, question number three. <laughs> this will be useful for both of you. Jackie, you can do more of your research at home if needed, yeah. and Damien finally gets to see his penis. <laughs> <laughs> since, <Finally>. both, <laughs> since both of you benefit from, from this, is it unethical for you to sit here and answer questions about it as if you were impartial? <laughs> How do you sleep at night? Well, Damien can sleep on his stomach. I know that. That's... When Steve <laughs> when Steve Jobs MacGyver came to me and said, Damien, what if we could help you with your problem? We just need for you to be a spokesperson on a very popular science podcast by the name of Science Faction. You all should listen to it and tell your friends about it. All you have to do is that. Listen, I'm not going to say that dark money doesn't exchange hands in the world of big podcasts. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Big Let's not talk about black people's small... money that way. <laughs> Listen, Big 40 Ounce came to Big 40 Ounce and Big Grill. Okay. Came to okay. me. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Let's move on to podcasts. Yeah, you want to you wanna out racist me? Let's go. Podcast. Podcast, motherfucker. All right, this week in podcasts, very interesting one from Radio Lab. Uh, you can look up Radio Lab's podcast on the Galapagos Islands. You guys may remember those from that uh, Darwin dude. He hung out there for a while. Mm-hmm. Galapagos are really neat. There's some islands off the, the coast of South America, and because they're so isolated, not only from the mainland but from each other, they have a bunch of species that made it there, like finches and tortoises, that differentiated on different islands into different species. So there's different species of finches on different islands, different species of tortoises and whatnot. Well, this was about a specific island called Pita, and a tortoise group that lived on there, they thought they went extinct, and then in 71, someone's walking around, and they see one of these tortoises on this island. They're like, fuck! So they call a researcher in, comes, checks it out. He's like, oh my gosh, we thought this was extinct. If we can just find a female one of these tortoises, we can keep this species going forever. This will be fantastic. So he went around looking for a female version of that tortoise, and uh, and amazingly was able, after searching the entire island, to find one uh, that had been murdered and cut in half about a year beforehand. And Aww. so the species was doomed for extinction. Love uh, lost. Yes. And so they wanted to... How they, uh, how they know it was cut in half? Maybe it was just a really he- well-hung male turtle out there. Yeah, just, just another male split. tortoise. Well, because George would have had to be that male tortoise, and he wasn't that well-hung. So oh, he nectar. It's not like fisting, but they use their head. So they find George, and now they're like, what do we do with him? Well, we tried to get him to mate with other species that were similar to him. He wasn't having it. He wasn't super interested in that. Oh, fine time to be picky, George. I know. They talked about how they had to, like, milk George to try and do some, like, artificial insemination. <laughs> how, do you, how, do you, uh, how do you think they milk George? Well, do they start with Barry White? They must have Barry White. Well, this one goes out to Lonesome George. Hmm. <laughs> Totus love. <laughs> Just come into vile, George. Um, well, no, no. Can't get enough of they, your shell, babe. They describe how you jerk off a tortoise, and it's actually like, it, it's kind of involved. I'm sure. Like, in order to simulate a tortoise kind of vagina with yeah. your hand. human, too. No, way more involved than it would be on a human. So, they, so in order to jerk off a tortoise for science, it's quite interesting and only slightly different than how you do it for fun. Basically, you have to, like, get behind them and, like, do some weird pawing it near their genitals until they decide that they're comfortable, and then they release, and then you can, like, try and use your hand to simulate the, the tortoise vagina, but it's a very involved process. He I did like not want to make... it all out. Yeah, right that's now. true. Yeah, with <laughs> his mouth, by the way. Yeah. really erotic. <laughs> On Damien. Um, so they weren't able to get George to mate. He, unfortunately, died in 2012, meaning that the pita tortoise went extinct. Oh, very George. sad. But the story does take a very nice turn. If you listen to the Radio Lab, you will hear about how... They found, a geneticist working on the Galapagos, found a group of PETA tortoise DNA in other tortoises on a different island. They think what happened is a bunch of whalers that used to come through the island all the time and pick the tortoises up and take them out to sea would occasionally then catch a whale, fill their hulls, not have room for the tortoises, and just throw them overboard. Because you can put a tortoise on his back in that same article on their back for a year, a year and a half, and they'll survive. Wait, what? You just put a tortoise just on his stack back. Them. They would just stack them in the holds. So they think that maybe they That's stopped insane. at PETA, filled their holds full of tortoises, caught a whale along the way, dumped out a couple of the tortoises, which swam and made it to this other island, bred with the local tortoises and interbred, and now has a larger population. Uh-huh. This geneticist looks at it and says, look, we can see this PETA DNA. If we breed the most PETA tortoises with the other most PETA tortoises, within three generations, we could have a 90% PETA tortoise 
throw it on that island, start yeah, a new pita gross. tortoise. Now, you, these, you think these people are such nature lovers. Here's one of the things they had to do, uh, because they did this whole thing because the uh, on pita, the vegetation was going crazy, and they needed tortoises mm-hmm. to keep it down. Uh-huh. So they put some tortoises on that island to just kind of be placeholder tortoises until they uh-huh. were to give the pita tortoise back, and they sterilized them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> just so, like, we are purists. That's right. Give me those tortoise testicles and go eat. <laughs> We love nature. I'm sure PETA would have had something to say about that. Yeah, if you think jerking off a tortoise is hard, you should try and sterilize one. <laughs> takes them forever to trust you enough just to hold their sack. Go back to palming them. Oh, man. Speaking of trust, there's nothing like the trust earned in a lightning round. <laughs> All right. Our lightning round in which I ask my contestants one to two sentence questions, and they respond with one to two sentence answers. Are you guys ready? Woo! Let's do this. Lightning round question one. What do researchers believe is causing 1.6 million cardiovascular-related deaths every year worldwide and 60,000 deaths in the U.S.? Heart attacks that you get while having sex with a hooker. Oh, hooker heart attacks. Hooker heart attacks. That would be the only argument I could ever hear about prostitution being illegal that makes sense to me is hooker heart attacks. Yeah. All right, Damien? The reason the amount of heart attacks is so high in America is because all the people who watch the outrageous things on daytime TV, every time they keep dropping the bar, people just faint. I, they can't even invest in monocles in America anymore because they all just keep falling out of everybody's eyes every time Maury comes on. <laughs> too much shock from daytime TV. Too much shock. The actual answer, too much salt. Aww. So it's recommended that you only have two grams of salt a day. The average in every area studied was above that, which oh, I like. Easily. Easily. It can go from sub Saharan Africa, where it was the lowest, at 2.18, so just over. By the way, sub Saharan starving Africans have just too much salt. That's that, apparently. We're giving them too much. My five cents a day is going way too much. I yeah. want to knock it back to two cents a day. <laughs> to 5.51 grams in Central Asia. I assume that's also probably because of preservation. And you're in Central Asia, probably yeah. hard to get fish and other stuff to you. So It's an ancient Chinese secret. <laughs> Excess sodium causes high blood pressure, which can lead to cardiovascular problems. Also, this only looks at cardiovascular deaths, but we also know that sodium causes kidney disease and stomach cancers, which is the second deadliest cancer worldwide, meaning that that number is still much lower than the total death caused by salt. So next time you guys feel like being a terrorist and trying to blow up the World Trade Center or something else, remember that that was 2,000 people, 1.6 million. Just start selling salt. Give me that soy sauce with the red top. I, uh, the ocean is like the terrorist of the world. Oh, my God. Invest heavily in Morton Salt. Gotcha. Question number two. What are scientists so excited to find out was leaky? Sarah Palin's arteries. Oh, scientists who, of course, I'm have, a scientist, and I would be really excited. <laughs> for those of you who remember Sarah, Sarah Palin has, has such science-supporting statements as, I can't believe we've spent millions of dollars to research fruit flies, mm. and also... I'm going to give children sugar cookies because Michelle Obama would be pissed about it. Yeah. Damien, what about you? What do you think scientists are excited to find out was leaky? Scientists are really excited about the release of Lois Leakey's solo album, This Is Leaky. Oh, okay. <laughs> is that a musical project? or? Well, it's a solo guitar. It's acapella. Yeah. Wait, Jackie, is you it know acapella or is it guitar? You know, she does. She don't. You don't lock her into any one. She has an acapella album, okay. and she has one where she has a full. She has one where the <laughs> London Philharmonic is behind her. Wait, you're uh, talking about Louis Leakey, the man? Yes, and and performing artist. You said she. I thought you said Lois Leakey. Ooh, is that you his might sister? Have, you might have misheard me. Hmm. <laughs> the actual answer: <laughs> the cell walls of Luca. Luca is the name of the last universal common ancestor. So basically, the thing that was living that gave rise to all living things, plants, animals, everything that we know of. That last common ancestor, based on some genetics that we can do, and also the physical environment we believe it lived in, Mm. it looks like it had very leaky cell walls, which is good because the way these things processed energy was that it was at the vents, these thermal vents underwater that still to this day push out a whole bunch of minerals and heat and superheated water yeah, (laughs) up through the ocean floor into the ocean. So there's a gradient. There's a proton gradient across that from the entry in the vent and the super hot water coming out all the way to the end. They feel with leaky cells, with these leaky cell walls and these leaky membranes, it would allow protons to enter the cell and be neutralized within the cell, which allows it to provide its own energy, as opposed to getting neutralized outside of the cell body. So those leaky cells may have allowed us to exist. Thank you. No, but really, check out Leaky's album coming out. (laughs) Question number three. What has two heads and can only be found in a turkey? A turducken. 
the chicken and the duck that are in the oh, turkey for introduction. Oh, that's right. Okay. Normally they take the heads off, but this is but special. it could be. Yeah. It I like that. Be. All right, good. Damien? What has two heads and can only be found in a turkey? You can find two men dogging, and it's inside of any bathhouse in Turkey. <laughs> Sometimes in a turkey itself. Yeah. yeah. It's a real meeting two heads, I mean, they, meeting of the minds. They call they call it the non-ironic rotisserie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the actual answer, a two-headed dolphin. Dolphins are doing it too? Yeah. A two-headed dolphin washed ashore on the shores of Turkey last week. It appears to be about a year old with one of the heads having an underdeveloped blowhole and eyes. So this is like Siamese twins and human beings. Mm-hmm. They lived for a year. So clearly it found a way to survive for a while. It's basically the same thing that we have with Siamese twins, conjoined twins, whatever you want to call them. This is the same thing. It's bizarre to me because I would think those are usually surgical births for us. Yeah, yeah. How is a dolphin have, giving birth to a two-headed dolphin? I mean, theoretically, oh my God. Some, they're more she has advanced two than vaginas. <laughs> two. Just one really big gaping vagina. Yeah. It, it is very neat to me that something like that could survive. It's sad that it died and we didn't get to observe it while it was alive in nature, but very yeah, cool, cool that that was running around. Have you thought that maybe it didn't survive past the year because the mother was so upset that essentially this thing ruined her down there? <laughs> just just so resentful of what took place. So anyway, very cool. We wish those dolphins the best in their death. And <laughs> on to finish my story. Finish my story, where one of us has to complete the other's balls. Okay, guys, here we are. Another week to finish my story. The score is eight to nine mm-hmm. uh, in, in favor of Bobby. Mm-hmm. Damien has really been trying, but I don't know if it's been enough. I just don't know. Well, I mean, I don't want to bring it up again, but what? I feel like I'm only allowed one answer where he's allowed ten each time. And I didn't want to bring this See, up, but I, I don't really it. think he's trying. I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's. Just... Oh, you're right. You're right. Let's 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 leave it all in the court today. By the way, can we explain what's happening? Yeah. So this is the finish my story. Jackie will read us an interesting story and ask us to finish it. Damien and I will compete in answers to see who gets most accurate. Jackie will decide, and at the end of the year, the winner of this ongoing tally gets to blow somebody else. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, get something cool. Okay. <laughs> well. Oh no! You had it right the first time. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. Everyone's heard of the laundry list of side effects that come after an advertisement for prescription drugs. From fatigue all the way to death, there are all kinds of ways that drugs can interact with the body systems and elicit some unintentional results. But are all side effects created equal? Maybe you have jury duty, and the extreme drowsiness or flu-like symptoms promised on the side of your migraine meds might actually work out in your favor. Or maybe you're this woman a woman that had early onset Parkinson's disease and started taking a commonly prescribed drug to treat it. What unexpected side effect do you guys think she might have experienced? Damien, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Let's have it, Damien. Um, I think that she became a very shaky She-Hulk-like creature every time she took the medication, uh, but it was triggered every time she became overly emotional or took longer than 20 minutes to get ready. Very okay. misogynistic. Okay. Was she strong when she became the she-hulk? Yeah, was, was she, she green? A, well, she was a huge green creature, but you uh, know, she was able to use it to her advantage. She shakes giant margaritas because she has Parkinson's. So, <laughs> like that. Well, that's clever. This bitch sounds fun. That's that is that's making lemonade. <laughs> yeah. Out of Parkinson's. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> the uh, owner of Cuervo Margarita saw her rampaging through the street and said, Oh, mi amor, we need to get her on the payroll. Giant margaritas. Find the Donkey Kong size barrel. <laughs> Jackie, what was the All question right. again? Um, a woman had early onset Parkinson's disease and started taking a commonly prescribed drug to treat it. But what unexpected side effect do you think she experienced? The starring role in Back to the Future? No. Oh. That's funny. I thought that was Michael J. Fox. Oh, that was a different Parkinson's guy. You're right. Hold on. Let me try again. What, what was the... Wait, well, I thought there was only one answer. That was, but I got that one wrong. No. So. Yeah, he thought it was Michael J. Fox, Damien. Yeah. Sorry. So go ahead. Go ahead uh-huh. with the, the yeah. question. What uh, unexpected side effect did this woman have when she took a Parkinson's disease drug? She became heavyweight champion of the United States. Um, Muhammad Ali. I think that's okay. what she... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But wait, oh, you're right. You're right. That, Wait, was, that a was different, a that was that a was a guy. case of a different. You're, let's try this without but, Muhammad yeah, Ali. Remember, I, thought, I thought he only. No, had, no. Remember, Damien, you got Lewis Leakey wrong. Mm-hmm. And so, so no, no, I didn't. You got a sex change. You said she. <laughs> anyway, right. anyway, go okay. ahead, Bobby. Sorry. Uh, let's try that. Let's try it again. Yeah. Um, a woman that had early onset Parkinson's disease started taking a drug to treat it. What unexpected side effect do you think she might have experienced? Uh, never again haunted 
by the dramatically stark images of an Etch-a-Sketch. Oh. Because you would just shake it. (laughs) (laughs) What a tortuous... I think that's it. I'm going to settle on that one. You had three answers. No, I just had the one. It's the Etch-a-Sketch. Yeah, Yeah, the Etch-a-Sketch one's the answer. And you called me out just because I was the only one discreet about leaky sex change? I didn't want to talk about it on air? That's his his prerogative. you're the one that broke, okay? Maybe she should keep her... Or he should keep a secret somewhere else. Jackie, what's the actual answer? The answer, gentlemen, is sporadic orgasms. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So a 42-year-old woman was admitted to the hospital com- complaining about orgasms. <laughs> or w- women. Complaining. Right? Ow. <laughs> Not just one. Can you imagine the dude with Dang. giant nails sticking out of his skull <laughs> in the, in the totally. ER? He's like, what are you in for? Too many orgasms. <laughs> totally. Could you imagine I the, can't stop being pleasured. Imagine the guy she was having sex with that, would, that set this thing yeah. off, and all of a sudden he's like, yeah, she's still coming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, I'm, right. yeah, I'm pretty good. <laughs> I fucked her last week. <laughs> We're not just talking about like one or two. We're talking two to five orgasms daily, lasting anywhere from five to 20 Wait seconds. a second. So normal. Yeah, she's oh. just... You know, <laughs> She's just remembering me. Your girlfriend, Bobby. Very lucky lady. She also experienced... Fuck my girlfriend. I was talking about me. We have a dramatic shortage of tissue paper in my household. (laughs) She had also experienced hyperarousal, is what she described. She had early onset Parkinson's disease and had been prescribed the drug Razagline, usually the first line of defense in early onset Parkinson's. So Razagline acts to increase dopamine levels by inhibiting monoamine oxidase. Uh, which is an enzyme that is responsible for the breakdown of dopamine after its reuptake in a nerve synapse. The lack of dopamine is what results in the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, shaking, uncontrollable muscle movement, and eventually worsening to disruptions in speech, thought, and overall brain function. So in order to prevent the disease progression, the drug blocks the enzyme from depleting your dopamine. Mm. The patient had been on the drug for 10 days when she began experiencing these unique side effects. It is the first report of such a side effect while being on the drug. The woman was not on any another, any other medication and had not changed her surroundings or diet in the 10-day period when these side effects began. She stopped taking the drug for 15 days and the mm. orgasm stopped. But without an alternative Parkinson's treatment, she resumed taking the drug and found herself back in O-Town. Poor girl. <laughs> <laughs> Typical side effects of the drug include joint pain and GI problems. This particular side effect is thought to be the work of the extra dopamine circulating. The importance of dopamine in human orgasm was originally recognized when researchers noticed an increase in arousal in male nursing home patients who had been taking L-DOPA, another drug used to treat Parkinson's. Imagine like a uh, congressional hearing where they're talking about, you know, warning labels on the sides of, yeah. of drugs. Yeah, exactly. And they have like people, you know, like uh, this lady comes up and speaks her piece, then goes, you know, sits down, and the next kid comes up. I am, I'm six years old and I'm on chemotherapy. <laughs> yeah, totally. Meanwhile, she's fucking when Harry met Sally in the audience. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then one of the congressional people speak up and they're like, yes, but how many orgasms are you having, son? <laughs> oh, excuse me, I'd like to hear more from the lady in the back. Uh, can we get this child? Uh, <laughs> you know what's funny is I've heard other things that happen from Parkinson's drugs. Gambling, sudden gambling addictions become big. Sudden mm. sex addictions become big. A lot big. of addictions, as a matter of fact. Yeah, and it's it, it that has to do with that dopamine and yeah. not not being able to kind of get rid of it in the synapse, from what I understand. Right. Well, and you just feel good about. There was a whole story about a guy who had no history with any kind of pedophilia, any child porn, anything. He started taking this stuff, and he like got addicted to child porn and ended yeah. up getting busted by the FBI. And his excuse was like, I, this isn't me. This isn't uh-huh. what I do. I'm taking this medication. Uh-huh. Sir, you, you are jacking it to an image of yeah. a child as we're talking to you. We are trying to arrest you. and yeah. you. Are- yeah, I don't know if I – I could maybe go gambling addict. The, the pedophilia yeah. addict, I, I don't know. Well, ask him because he's sitting right to your left. Damien, tell us about it. <laughs> Listen, my lawyer says he can get me out on a technicality. They were they were Thai children, and under current U.S. law, Thai children don't have souls. Oh. So I think, hey, that's a good lawyer you have. No, that's right, uh, Jackie. Who won? I actually, I really like the giant margarita. I'm gonna go with Damien. Tied we're, up, tied up, nine up. Even though it was kind of rude how he wanted to like have another I know, answer, right? but I, I really, I, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm I can forgive him if you can. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in a good place. Let's I'm forgive. Rudy, and I have heart, and not actual heart, not like one of those shitty runners' hearts that craps out if you work <laughs> out more right. than. A- well, one group of people who don't have weak hearts are our audience, so hopefully they come on back, running or not, for Science Faction 33, where we'll have even more fun. See you guys later. See ya. Hey, Jackie, uh, before we leave during the show, I made one of those uh, smartphone microscopes. Oh, cool. Come check this out. Yeah, okay. Uh, Oh, you're circumcised. 
You've been listening to Science Function. Wait, that's not right. <laughs>